Hello and welcome to the May 4th Hemp Show powered by CanTrade. My name is Mark Rostelli. I'm the CEO of CanTrade and the host of The Hemp Show. Next up on The Hemp Show is Joe Conklin, the COO and lead cultivator at Hemp House Farms. Joe's passion for gardening began with helping his grandfather. Now with nearly two decades of experience in the cannabis space, he is the CEO and lead cultivator at Hemp House Farms, an 80,000 square foot greenhouse grow operation. Prior to this position, Joe had worked for a time at a garden center and started a consulting business where he designed and built grow spaces. He has developed many cannabis products and strives to help others incorporate cannabis into their daily routine and, all, and as well as gain the medical benefits without the use of pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much for joining us today, Joe, and welcome to The Hemp Show. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. Excellent. So you've got an extensive background as a grower and I love the bags in the background. Um, yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to kind of start from the start in the past, as far as where and when you got into this space, ultimately what led you here and then how, you know, how that led you to hemp house farms. And then from there dive into the products and, and maybe we could crack that bag open. I wish we had smell of vision. Right. <laughs> I know it's uh, from one of our more recent harvests because we're harvesting uh pretty much on a bi-weekly basis at the moment. Uh, but to go back to the original, you know, what started, uh, my interest in getting into this, uh, like I said, as you stated, my grandfather, uh, he was an avid gardener. So naturally spending time there as a child, I was always helping him grow tomatoes and peppers or whatever was going on at the time. Um, just learning basic gardening techniques. And it just kind of stuck with me as a hobby. And then I'll say once I got into high school around 14 years of age is when cannabis crossed my path and we formed a very good relationship from then. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love how you stated that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and then um, naturally I uh, wanted to start cultivating the plant myself. And as I dove more into research and benefits of this, we were able to see how we could help people get off of pharmaceuticals. I have plenty of friends who are on anti-anxiety and depression meds and they just seemed like zombies. So really wanted to help as many as we could with that. And, you know, now products we've developed, we you know, consistently are helping out cancer patients. Uh, I mean, you name it for skin conditions and other pain ailments like arthritis or salves and lotions, just donating a lot to people as well, just to get them interested because of the, you know, the ca cannabis taboo, we'll say where a lot are hesitant or afraid to get into it or even try it just because of the stigma. So it's usually I found best to just give people stuff and like here, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, there's no risk right now. Right, right. And when you when you talk about the stigma, I mean, I've, I've experienced it firsthand. I as a as a former athlete, I, I didn't really partake, partake in in the cannabis side. Um, but the stigma was always there. And it was kind of like, it was kind of unspoken, but was interesting is once I started into the industry, I would have people come out of the woodworks that I'd known for years and years that would either that either did smoke or they wanted to know about it because they were dealing with some sort of ailment that they were curious if cannabis or hemp was going to be able to help them with that ailment. Um, I've told the story before, but I was at a, I was at a, uh, I was at a wedding in Texas and I was like known as the weed guy at the wedding, which was hilarious because <laughs> nobody, nobody said it to me directly. And every person at the wedding at one point had come up and talked to me about their usage or had questions and was curious. But when we were in groups, nobody would talk about it. It was just, it was so funny. I was just like, you, I was like, you don't even know that your dad's over there smoking weed. <laughs> oh man. So a uh, question for you, when you started, you started at a home garden center and then you started consulting for building grow spaces. When did you start growing? And then ultimately, when did that turn into a uh, commercial operation? So the first time I really dabbled with it, I was probably like 15 years old and just lied to my parents and said I had some science experiment that I was doing and tried popping a seed with a foil lined cardboard box and a heat lamp. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's I always love going back to that one because apparently, you know, my parents found it and I had to come up with some story on the spot as to what the hell I was doing. 
Um, <laughs> so I don't always gives me a good laugh. And, and how, and how big but, was the, how big was the seedling? Was it? You oh, nothing happened. No, oh, nothing happened. It sprouted okay. and died. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, did you yeah, have any actual, no, that was a miserable do you have an actual leaves formed? Cause then they're like, wait a second. I don't know what you might be nope. doing something else here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that never really worked. So then it just ended up to being little uh, five gallon pots in the middle of the woods where, cause I live near a state park. So we had plenty of space to go. Uh, <laughs> hey, we try are, and experiment our bag seeds. <laughs> our, our story, you know, the, the story you're telling sounds incredibly similar. I popped some seeds from my, from my brother's weed when I was in probably like, I was probably like 13, made a grow box. Uh, it was growing, plant was growing amazing and until uh, it had touched one of the fly strips All and right. the fly strip had completely poisoned it. And then, then that then moved out into um, the forest and I mean, it had some probably two to three footers and then they all just got destroyed by the deer. Deer, oh. deer came through and just wiped them out. <laughs> yep. I've had a few stories from farmers that last season were saying that he lost, it was like a quarter acre to deer, something like that. I mean, they ended up just leaving a bunch of plants because they couldn't even harvest it just because those, of some, those some happy deer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so when did that, when did that lead into commercial operations? And then, um, then let's talk more specifically yeah, so, about how farms. Uh, I was originally from Massachusetts. I just moved down to Connecticut about seven, six, seven months ago now to just be closer to work. Cause this farm is in Cheshire, Connecticut. So I did originally start with cultivating in mass cause the laws are a little bit more loose up there. So I had gotten into the medical program and was growing cannabis for myself medicinally. And then I was like, all right, hey, you know, I'm pretty good at this. So, you know, interviewed at a hydroponic growing store, went into there, um, helped doing a, just help guidance and helping people solve their problems. Cause you know, I was trying to prevent as many issues as you can. The grow store was kind of like a blessing in disguise. Cause I had to deal with everybody's problems and give them guidance on how to solve issues I never even dealt with. So that was probably one of the best pieces of, anything that I ever got <laughs> guidance and knowledge out of the whole cannabis industry was working there. And then, so what I was doing for pretty close to minimum wage there, I was like, Hey, I could probably turn this and actually make some real money out of it. So then just going to people's houses and Hey, you're grow. This is what you need or just building their tents or just setting up the whole hydroponic system or even getting into uh, smaller, maybe under, we'll say thousand square foot, smaller facilities that, just needed some tips and pointers how to just get to the next level and solve a few problems and just improvise. Very cool. So, so when that leads you to this uh, 80,000 square foot greenhouse, that is huge. Uh, can you talk a bit about the different growing techniques that you're using at, um, at Hemp House Farms and then ultimately dive from there into the products? Let's talk about what you got on the, on the desk next year. All right. So, and 2019, the year that Connecticut started doing their hemp program, I worked for another company as the lead cultivator. And that's how it eventually ended up leading me to finding this place through just mutual connections and there being a vacant spot here and a need for my position. Um, so we came here, uh, we're growing out of uh, pro mix primarily cut with rice hulls and doing a simple jacks part a and b through dosatrons for veg i also throw a slow releasing 844 npk value of turkey compost fertilizer into the veg so that way i don't have to have two different nutrient systems so pretty much the same nutrients that go through the veg hit another dosatron with a bloom booster that go into the flower rooms and our my small flower room that's eighteen thousand square feet um so small, small flower room. Yeah, that's, well, that's a small, small. one. <laughs> the other one's 36 uh, that we're finishing building right now. So yeah, they're all run through like the dosatrons. There's a Jack's nutrient line, part A and B. And then we add a bloom booster and uh, different microbes and other things we add systemically throughout the cycle, depending what stage they're in. Because in that area, I have six different areas that will harvest that every other week. So I always have something that's in week one of flower and something that's in week eight of flower. Um, and then we're planning on doing the same thing in the other room and it's just double the size. So we call them ponds. This used to be a hydroponic lettuce facility. 
So if you ever bought like those living lettuce heads at the grocery store, that's what okay. they did here. So, it, and they're all in, and they're these are all these are all light depth greenhouses as well. Yes. Yep. So everything we run them, you know, the twelve twelve light cycles, and we have shade cloths to help reduce the heat as well. Um, but yeah, so we can run year round perpetual harvests, and generally once I have this place fully going. So we're just about done with our power upgrade. We'll have 10 to 12,000 plants going at any given time. Okay. And then what's your, what's your harvest turnaround as far as, uh, I think you mentioned several hundred pounds a week. What was, what was the. So right now I'm harvesting about 360 plants every other week, every three weeks, depending okay. on the strain and its cycle. So we're probably well, weight wise. <laughs> at least 150 to 200 pounds we're pushing out every three to four weeks okay excellent excellent so we're we're getting close to the end of our time here and sorry i, I monopolized the start of that time which is kind of wanting to learn more about understand. you and how you got here um, but let's talk about what you got as far as products with hemp house farms so we're offering uh, we obviously plenty of hemp flour um, our website has all the strains that we um, are currently cultivating so I'm constantly going through pheno hunting and testing what has the better CBD values. We're working with a few CBM products currently that we're able to get these genetics from Israel. I was told I'm one of three farms in the United States that has these genetics that are testing at uh, two to four percent CBM, opposed to usually like the really low, low, low <laughs> fractions that we get out of that. We we've had some pretty awesome genetics providers, including geneticists, um, on the show prior. We'll have to get you in touch with. Yeah, I mean, we're talking like we're talking complete custom formula uh, genetic formulations. It's it'd be it'd be something I think you'd be interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now we currently, like I said, we offer the flour. We have a pre rolls, five pack pre rolls, uh, many different uh, strengths of oils, tinctures, balms. Let's see what else did we start. We recently started making some Delta Eight products as well. Uh, we've been having finally got our first batch of our product converted into it. So that's like a big thing with us is we literally make and provide everything that we sell ourselves. We don't source any products, distillate nothing from anyone else. And we do now, have a qu lab question for you. Us. Question for you related okay. to that on the post processing. Um, are you working with a manufacturing facility or do you also have in house manufacturing? We do it all ourselves. As well? My wife and the owner's wife do the manufacturing at the moment. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's all, we're trying to stay really do everything under this roof. We're looking to vertically integrate and do a build an extraction facility here as well so that we don't need to bring it elsewhere. Cause that's really the only thing that we don't do at the moment is extraction. Cool. Cool. Well, Hey, this was, this was interesting. Sorry. We are, our time just goes by so quickly. Um, so if you're interested in connecting with Joe and Hemp House Farms, please add them to your network on Cantrade. You can also place orders and ask questions directly from the Hemp House Farms wholesale store, post in the webinar chat, also in the Cantrade feed and in the podcast and YouTube show notes. Thank you very much, Joe. And like most people that I've been speaking with today, like we got to get you on the deep dive because, uh, you know, you've got a host of experience. I'd love to dive into more detail related to everything that you're doing on the grow side. Um, and especially pick your brain on some of the expertise you have on these growing techniques. Right on. Appreciate it. Thank you cool. for having me, Mark. You're welcome.